Hello and welcome to this clip going through a more difficult balancing equation example. I'm going to cover two ways to tackle the equation, uh, one from GCSE and the other one from A-level. So the A-level version will involve a concept called oxidation numbers. Now you may not have covered oxidation numbers yet so when I come to talk about it I'll give a very brief overview of what an oxidation number is and how we use them. So the GCSE version is basically using the lowest common multiple counting the atoms on each side and then multiplying up accordingly until they match. So this is the unbalanced version. Uh, what we need to do is uh, to count up the atoms on each side. So on the left hand side and right hand side you've got the one zinc, so zinc's balanced already. Hydrogen isn't, neither is nitrogen and neither is oxygen. So what we've got to do is find the, uh, the lowest common multiple of the element that has the biggest difference. So looking at oxygen, it has the biggest difference between the left and the right, so that's where we need to start. So the lowest common multiple of 3 and 8 is 24. So by multiplying um, HNO3 by 8, I'm, I balance my oxygens. So if we adjust the hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen count on the left hand side to, um, to bring it up to date now, this immediately means that the water is multiplied by 4 because there needs to be 8 hydrogens on the right hand side. So if we do a, a, a count of oxygen on the right hand side, that now means we've got 11. So looking at the nitrogen now, uh, we can see that we've got 8 on the left hand side, but we only have 3 on the right hand side. How can we deal with this? So by adjusting for nitrogen so that we have 8 on the right hand side, we automatically solve for oxygen. We now need to balance the zinc, so that's quite easy. Go to the left hand side and treble the zinc. OK, so let's now have a look at the A-level version, which involves using oxidation numbers. So first of all, let's just bring out some basic definitions. Oxidation number is the measure of the number of electrons that an atom uses to bond with atoms of another element. And reduction is the gain of electrons by an atom of an element from another atom during a chemical reaction. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, so it's the opposite. So during those processes, you'll have a change in the oxidation number. So during a reduction, there'll be a decrease in the oxidation number. During oxidation, there'll be an increase in oxidation number. So one can't happen without the other, so we usually refer to these simultaneous processes as redox reactions. So I'm now going to clear the screen space to do the workings for our original equation, but using the oxidation number method. So there's a few rules that need to be applied when you're assigning an oxidation number to an element. I've left them here. These are uh, what you'll learn during the course of the A-level syllabus. If you've covered them already, then they'll be familiar to you. If you haven't covered them yet, don't worry too much. We will definitely cover them uh, later on in the course. So what you do is you assign oxidation numbers to everything, every single element. So an uncombined element such as zinc is going to be zero. So I've put a zero in next to zinc. All my hydrogens are going to be plus one. All my oxygens are going to be minus two. So looking at the water, two hydrogens for water gives a total of plus two, each hydrogen having an oxidation number of plus one. Oxygens minus two balances this, so therefore water ends up with an overall oxidation number of zero, but the individual atoms have different amounts of electrons involved in their bonding. If you're not sure, do a quick dot cross diagram for water and you'll see what I mean. Oxygen has two electrons involved in bonding, each hydrogen has one. So we know that zinc has ions of plus two, so they are the oxidation number as well that's applied to zinc when it's in a compound. So let's now do the nitrogen. Now in HNO3, the total of all the oxidation numbers must add up to zero because nitric acid is an uncharged compound. So there's three oxygen atoms, so the total contribution is minus six. 
minus 2 for each individual 1. There's only one hydrogen whose contribution is plus 1. That's a deficit of plus 5. That's where the nitrogen comes in. So now the nitric acid has a total oxidation number of 0. Now what we've got to do is see what happens to the nitrogen on the right hand side. So if it stays as a nitrate ion, then it'll remain as plus 5 because there's no change in that ion's overall charge. So in the nitrate ion, it'll stay as plus 5. But it also ends up in nitrogen monoxide, NO, the gas. So if you look at nitrogen monoxide, you can see that it's got um, a minus 2 for its oxygen. It's going to be 0 overall because it's a neutral compound, an uncharged compound. So here the nitrogen must take on uh, plus 2. So what we've now got to look at is where does the oxidation number change? So the zinc goes from 0 to plus 2, so it loses 2 electrons. The oxidation number is increased, and as we remember, oxidation is loss. Reduction is gain. So in this case, going from plus 5 to plus 2 means a gain of 3 electrons. Now, the problem is, if you lose 2 but you gain 3, that's an imbalance in the number of electrons. We have to balance the number of electrons. So to do that, we've got to multiply up. So looking closely at the number of electrons, multiply 3 by 2. So the oxidation needs to happen 3 times, which means multiplying the zinc up 3 times. So to support this, the reduction needs to happen twice, so there's an overall transfer of 6 electrons. And if we now... Uh, and think about the nitrogen on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we'll quickly realise there's eight nitrogens on the right hand side, so therefore we need to multiply up the HNO3 on the left hand side by eight, which then allows us to put uh, uh, four H2O in, and adjusting uh, the rest as before, that gives us our fully balanced equation. So, hopefully this has been a useful way of looking at two different methods of balancing a difficult equation. Uh, so, until next time, see you soon and thanks for watching.